The following program is produced by the Living Church of God. Have you ever wondered, does God really exist? 96% of Americans say that they believe in God, but which God? Have they ever really proved His existence? Or do they just accept it on blind faith? Well, I have news for them, and perhaps for you. You can know, and know that you know, the answer to the question, Does God exist? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents Dr. Roderick C. Meredith Richard Ames Bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world This week, Richard Ames explores the question, Does God Exist? And now, Richard Ames. Warm greetings to you all. Is there really a God? For thousands of years, mankind has asked this question. Some seek the answer in science. Others look to philosophy. Countless billions have followed many different religions, each claiming to know the answer. But what is the truth? And can you prove it for yourself? A Time magazine cover in the mid-60s asked the shocking question... Is God dead? Millions live their lives as though He were. They do not realize that every human being will someday stand in judgment before God. They don't realize that God loves every one of us, and that He has an exciting and awesome plan for us as members of His family to be with Him for all eternity. We've discussed that plan in previous programs. Newspaper columnist Irv Kupsenet once asked the question, quote, what can you say about a society that says God is dead and Elvis is alive? My answer is that you can say that it is deceived. To millions of deceived human beings, Elvis Presley is more real to them than is the Creator God. Still, fewer than 4% of the world's population claim to be atheist. An amazing 96% of Americans say they believe in God. In Canada, a recent poll by Carleton University found that 80% of Canadians believe in God, though fewer than 25% actually attend worship services. In Australia, a survey conducted by the National Church Life Survey and Edith Cowan University found that 74% of Australians believe in God, and in Britain, 69% believe in God. Those statistics may sound impressive, but how strong is their belief? And what do they really believe in? Can you know the truth? Can God and science coexist? Many people have serious misunderstandings about what the Bible really teaches. If you have a Bible, open it to Genesis 1 and verse 1. The very first verse in your Bible. Genesis 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The very first verse of your Bible reveals that God is the creator of all things. That's quite a claim. Notice, though, it does not say when he created all things. This event could have been billions of years ago. Notice verse 2. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. The words for form and void in the original Hebrew are tohu and bohu. If you have a strong concordance, you can look those words up. They mean desolation and emptiness. Now, the important question is, did God create the world that way? Or did it become that way after the original creation? Let the Bible itself answer the question. Isaiah 45, verse 18. For thus says the Eternal who created the heavens, who is God, who formed the earth and made it, who has established it, he did not create it in vain, who formed it to be inhabited. I am the Eternal, and there is no other. God says He did not create it in vain. The Hebrew word here in Isaiah 45 for the English word vain is tohu, the same word translated in Genesis 1-2, without form. God did not create the world that way. Some indeterminate time after the original creation, the world became Tohu and Bohu. We don't have time now for a complete explanation, 
but the condition of emptiness and vacancy of the earth came subsequent to the original creation, which means that the original creation could have been billions of years ago. God did, however, renew the face of the earth, as it tells us in Psalm 104, verse 30. That was in more recent times. Mankind was created far more recently. But the Bible does not teach that the entire universe, or even just the earth, was just created a few thousand years ago. Even scientists admit that the universe has not always existed. They acknowledge a creation, even if they don't always acknowledge a creator. The famous astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, in a lecture on the beginning of time, stated this, quote, The universe has not existed forever. Rather, the universe and time itself had a beginning in the Big Bang about 15 billion years ago. End of quote. Yes, according to science, the material universe had a specific beginning. Astronomer Hugh Ross, Ph.D., researched galaxies and quasars at California Institute of Technology. He has this to say about recent cosmological discoveries. All the great cosmological discoveries of the 20th century fly in the face of materialist notions about the infinite random universe. On the contrary, they support the fact of a finite beginning caused by and guided by a divine, personal, caring designer who exists before and beyond the universe. End of quote. Yes, the universe and time itself had a finite and specific beginning. When the universe came into existence, all the laws of physics and chemistry were intact. They did not evolve. Patrick Glynn, in his book, God the Evidence, writes that everything had to be, quote, just right from the very start. Everything from the values of fundamental forces like electromagnetism and gravity to the relative masses of the various subatomic particles to things like the number of neutrino types at time one second, which the universe has to know already at 10 to the minus 43rd second. The slightest tinkering with a single one of scores of basic values and relationships in nature would have resulted in a universe very different from the one we inhabit. Say, one with no stars like our sun, or no stars, period. Far from being accidental, life appeared to be the goal toward which the entire universe, from the very moment of its existence, had been orchestrated, fine-tuned. End of quote. Where did these laws come from? Did they come from nothing? Is that a meaningless question, as some agnostics assert? Absolutely not. These laws were in existence at the first moment of creation. Scientists admit they had to be. As theoretical physicists Stephen Hawking and Roger Penrose wrote, quote, The only way to have scientific theory is if the laws of physics hold everywhere, including at the beginning of the universe, end of quote. The existence of such marvelous predictable laws in nature points to a master intelligence and lawgiver, Add to that evidence the existence of unseen spiritual laws, and you double the evidence of a great lawgiver. You can read more proofs for the existence of God in our free booklet, The Real God, Proofs and Promises. The great physicist and Nobel Prize winner Albert Einstein saw awesome intelligence in the existence of natural law. He wrote that the scientists, quote, religious feeling takes the form of a rapturous amazement at the harmony of natural law, which reveals an intelligence of such superiority that compared with it, all the systematic thinking and acting of human beings is an utterly insignificant reflection, end of quote. Even Albert Einstein understood that human reasoning has severe limitations. Listen to what another noted scientist has to say about the limitations of science. Sir John Maddox, author of What Remains to be Discovered, described the beginning of the universe. In 1999, Maddox wrote on the subject A Theory of Everything in Time magazine. He explained the following, quote, Only 70 years ago, the universe was found to be expanding. But now there is a model of how it began, the Big Bang. At the beginning, it is said, there was literally nothing, the void, Genesis. Not even space. Then there came into being a tiny speck of superheated space 
that contained enough energy to create all the stars and galaxies that fill the sky with enough left over to drive the expansion of the universe ever since, end of quote. Maddox continues, quote, There are also serious philosophical problems created by the Big Bang, which can be described but not explained. Worse, nobody has been able to reconcile quantum physics with the other great triumph of 20th century physics, Einstein's theory of gravitation. Until that is done, listen to this admission, the true nature of our universe will remain beyond our ken, end of quote. Yes, beyond our knowledge and understanding. I appreciate the candor of Sir John Maddox. Certainly there is scientific truth, but science is limited. It can describe the how of nature to a certain extent, but it cannot answer the deeper questions of why the universe and what is the purpose of human beings. To a thoughtful person, the creation is proof of a creator. The creator God challenges puny little humans in Isaiah 40 in verse 26. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. The vastness of the universe and its expansiveness give evidence to a great divine creator. That creator communicates through the creation and through the revelation of his word, the Holy Bible. He reveals to us what science cannot know, the very meaning of life itself. Don't believe those who tell you that life has no purpose and that your existence is a mere accident in a godless universe. You can learn for yourself why you were created and what God has in store for you for all eternity. In our free booklet, The Real God, Proofs and Promises, God's existence is logical and provable. In our modern atheistic age, millions do not believe in God. Others believe that God is an abstract, impersonal force with no special interest in the lives of human beings. This booklet covers more information than we have time to share on this program. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free booklet, The Real God, Proofs and Promises. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. In the first part of our program, we saw that scientists recognized that the universe was not an accident. It was created. As Patrick Glynn stated, Far from being accidental, life appeared to be the goal toward which the entire universe, from the very first moment of his existence, had been orchestrated, fine-tuned. We saw that the Bible is consistent with honest science, and we saw that scientists admit the limitations of what they can know. Remarkably, some are determined to ignore logic and the facts, so they can hold on to their world view that life is meaningless. They want to remain ignorant so they can continue in their godless ways denying the consequences. The famous English author, Aldous Huxley, wrote the following in his book, Ends and Means, quote, Most ignorance is vincible ignorance. We don't know because we don't want to know. It is our will that decides how and upon what subjects we shall use our intelligence. Those who detect no meaning in the world generally do so because, for one reason or another, it suits their books that the world should be meaningless. End of quote. What an admission! Huxley stated, Most ignorance is vincible ignorance. We don't know because we don't want to know. That statement sounds very much like Romans, the first chapter, and verse 20. Romans 1 and verse 20. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, 
but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. The Creator God says those who choose to ignore the creation and the meaning of life are without excuse. One of the proofs of God's existence is that He has revealed the answer to the questions, why life? Why the universe? Now, once you come to prove that the Bible is God's revelation to man, that it reveals the deep mysteries of life, meaning, and purpose, you'll realize the awesome nature of God, that God is a Father who loves His children. If you have a Bible, turn to Ephesians 3 and verse 15. Here, God is called the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Listen, God is working through His Son, Jesus Christ, to bring many sons and daughters into His divine family. Turn to Hebrews, the second chapter, Hebrews 2 and verse 9. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that He, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting for Him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, listen to this, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. God has an awesome purpose for his creation, and you are a part of that purpose. God's revelation to humanity of his very purpose for the creation is strong evidence of his existence and his nature. Is it reasonable to expect creation without a creator? Of course not, as we've seen. And is it unreasonable to expect life without a life giver? As Dr. Douglas Winnell points out in his booklet, The Real God, Proofs and Promises, science has shown that evolutionary theories of life's origins are hopeless failures. Let me quote, Proposing this evolutionary theory of life's origins is analogous to suggesting that an explosion in a junkyard could produce a fully assembled automobile and that this automobile could then begin reproducing itself, end of quote. That may sound absurd, but in essence, that's what some evolutionists believe. Common sense, science, and scripture all agree. Life demands a life giver, and design demands a designer. Fields as diverse as molecular biology and cosmology are coming to see that we cannot explain human life with purely mechanistic processes. Let me quote again from Dr. Winnale's booklet. Quote, Darwin acknowledged that complex organs such as the eye would be difficult to explain in terms of the gradual stepwise process outlined by his theory. But he did not realize how complicated the molecular biology of vision would turn out to be. Biochemist Michael Behe writes in Darwin's Black Box that evolutionists' inability to explain the development of such complicated structures and processes is a very strong indication that Darwinism is an inadequate framework for understanding the origin of complex biochemical systems." End of quote. Darwinism is inadequate. Design demands a designer, the Creator God. God has designed not just human beings, but an entire universe. And He has a plan for us that most people don't even realize. Neither science nor evolution can explain that plan. They cannot explain the purpose for the universe, and they cannot explain the purpose for our human existence. Only the Creator God reveals the answers. We asked earlier, why does the creation exist? Why the universe? The astounding answer is, the universe exists as an environment for human beings to learn about God and His way of life. He wants to share that universe with you for all eternity. God is love. That profound truth is stated twice, 1 John 4.8 and 1 John 4.16. God is the supreme ruler of the universe. It is His kingdom we pray to come to this earth. God is creating a loving, divine family through His Son, Jesus Christ. You can be a part of that family. Another proof for the existence of God is the existence of a spirit realm. Most Christians understand and believe that there is an unseen spirit world. Did God create a spirit realm before the physical universe came into being? The book of Job answers that question. 
Open your Bible to the 38th chapter of Job. The patriarch Job was a very great leader and very wise and knowledgeable, but his human wisdom was very insignificant compared to God's. Job 38 and verse 1. Then the Eternal answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Job wasn't alive when the creation took place. Neither were any of us. Job really didn't know it all. All the knowledge that humans contain, even collectively, is minuscule compared to the great mind of the universe. But notice in the question God asked Job that he reveals, quote, The morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Who are these morning stars? The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 20, shows that stars are a symbol for angels. The angels shouted for joy when the earth was created. They already existed. God created the angels before the world began. Ezekiel 28, verses 14 through 15, refer to an anointed cherub, an angelic being, who was created. Not only is there a physical creation, but there is also a spiritual creation and a spirit world. In studying the fundamental proofs for God's existence, we can also examine both natural law and spiritual law. We can examine physical life and spiritual life. What are some of the other proofs of God? Our free booklet, The Real God, Proofs and Promises, gives you seven proofs for God's existence, including fulfilled prophetic promises. The past and the present testify to the veracity of Bible prophecy and the one who guarantees its fulfillment. So pick up the telephone right now and request your free booklet, The Real God, Proofs and Promises. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. No cost, no obligation to you. Call today. Scientists cannot prove that there is no God. Yet many have crossed that boundary and abandoned their objectivity. The scientific method emphasizes observation, experimentation, and human reasoning. To raise it to the level of a religion is unscientific. Yet that's exactly what many do. Listen to this quote from George Wald from an article entitled The Origin of Life in a 1954 Scientific American. Quote, the reasonable view was to believe in spontaneous generation, the only alternative to believe in a single primary act of supernatural creation. There is no third position. One has only to contemplate the magnitude of this task to concede that the spontaneous generation of a living organism is impossible. Yet here we are as a result, I believe, of spontaneous generation, end of quote. A writer for a science magazine says that spontaneous generation is impossible and yet believes it to be true. My friends, I ask you, what kind of science is that? As we've seen, Objective scientists admit that the universe had a beginning and that time itself had a beginning. My friends, the creation of the universe from nothing and the creation of time requires a creator. Further, the creator reveals the nature and purpose of the creation in the Bible. The Bible is the revelation of the creator to you, his creation. One of the greatest proofs of God is the reality of an active, continuing spiritual creation which is unknown to carnally blinded human beings, 
But for those who are spiritually minded, the transformation of selfish nature into godly nature in some genuinely Christian individuals is a powerful proof of a personal God. We ought to pray as King David of ancient Israel prayed. Psalm 51 and verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me by your generous spirit. You, yes, you, are destined to be a part of that spiritual creation, a part of a spiritual kingdom and a spiritual family for all eternity. In addition to the laws of nature, the unseen spiritual laws that are immutable, holy, just, and good, those laws are in force, and they act powerfully upon every human being, whether we realize it or not. The existence of spiritual law is a strong proof for God's existence. Listen to what the Apostle John wrote in 1 John 2 and verse 3. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Yes, you can know that you know God exists. Christians who have applied these spiritual laws through the help of the Holy Spirit understand the way of peace that no other man-made system can produce. In the future, the divine lawgiver will teach spiritual law to the whole world, and the whole world will be motivated to learn that way of life. Micah, the fourth chapter, and verse 1. Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow to it. Many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Eternal, to the house of the God of Jacob, he will teach us his ways, and we shall walk in his paths. For out of Zion the law shall go forth, and the word of the Eternal from Jerusalem. There is a God, a God who can be seen in his creation, and who has revealed a way of life that can bring peace and happiness in your life today, and will bring that peace and happiness to the whole world when Jesus Christ returns. That Creator God is working out on earth a wonderful plan for your future, and the future of all humanity. You can prove God's existence, and you can understand His awesome purpose for you. Dr. Meredith and I will continue to share with you the exciting revelations of the Bible and where the world is headed. You need to watch World Trends in the Light of Bible Prophecy. Be sure to call or write for the free booklets and tapes we offer on this program, and be sure to join us again next week, right here, at this same time. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free if you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.